Let's pause a moment and reflect. This is a good time to look back on what we've done. This is really the only calculus that we're going to be doing in this volume. From now on, we are going to be focused on building tools to be used when, later, we dive into multivariable calculus, starting with derivatives. Now, before we get started with this long journey, let's consider a question or two that you may have been asking yourself. For example, do we really need calculus for curves in all dimensions? It seems like anything physical would really be for curves in the plane or maybe three-dimensional space. Oh no, you really need curves in the nth dimension, especially if you care about data, such as time series data. Consider some variable, let's call it x, that is evolving over time, and you're given this data. Maybe it's from some experimental rig. Well, this is really a one-dimensional output. You've got one variable changing. But what happens when you have multiple time series data? So let's say now that you've got n different readings. Let's call them x1, x2, x3. And these are all evolving as a function of time. Now, in this case, if you assume a consistent time, one can think of all these time series together as giving you a single time parameterized curve in a space whose dimension equals the number of time series. So you're really in an n-dimensional space. For a simple example, consider three time series. Let's call them x, y, and z. And each of them is evolving in time. Now, if we plot x of t, y of t, z of t, this traces out a curve in three-dimensional space. OK, so that's a, a simple example with just three time series. What happens when we have n different time series. And let's think, are there any sort of situations in which this is really a natural thing to look at? And what does this mean about the dimensionality of physical systems? Well, consider robotics. It takes six variables to assign position and orientation data to a single flying drone. What about a swarm of them? Let's say you're more interested in finance, and you're keeping track of a bunch of different companies' stock prices, each of which is a time series. How many dimensions are implicit in a typical stock index? And if you're interested in neuroscience, then you are interested in high-dimensional data, because each neuron has a time series of electrical activity. How many neurons do you have inside of your head? That is high-dimensional data.